the Lord's Prayer uh, in John 17. Ah, oh, you thought I was talking about the other Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven. No, I'm talking about this wonderful outpouring of a deep prayer from the Lord Jesus uh, for himself, for his disciples, for all believers. Uh, and I want to focus on uh, John 17, uh, verse 6, and the few verses following. It's a wonderful prayer that we can um, also pray. Uh, of course, we're not the Lord Jesus, we're co-heirs, we, you know, he's our elder brother, but we can pray uh, this prayer in the same sense that he prayed it, and you'll see what I mean as I go through. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. It's a wonderful focus on the Lord's disciples. Well, it should also be our focus on those that the Lord has given us. He's given us our children. He's given us our families. He's given us our friends. And maybe also he's given us um, uh, disciples, those who actually follow us. What a great responsibility that is. He says, I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. Now, there is a place for us to go out into all the world and preach the gospel and make disciples of all people. Um, there is a place for evangelism. He gave some to be pastors, some to be apostles, some to be uh, prophets, some to be pastors, evangelists and teachers. Uh, different ones with different emphases, different giftings. Of course, we're all called to um, uh, be ready to give an account for the faith that we have. We should all be ready to share the Lord Jesus with those um, we come into contact with, maybe on a train, um, a commuter train, if there's anyone out there uh, prepared to listen. I've tried it a few times. It's quite difficult when people are focused on their books or watching the, the blue planet on their iPhones. I don't think you can get a, a word in. But we are called to speak out God's word, to be his light and not to hide his light. So in one sense, we're all evangelists of some form or another. But in this prayer, the Lord isn't praying for the world. He's not praying, as it were, for the lost. He's praying for those who are close to him. And we can learn a lot from this in our prayers for those we love and care for, those whom the Lord has given us. I revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. We need to reveal uh, God the Father, the Father heart of God, the truth about God the Creator, the truth about God's law, God's righteousness, His holiness. First and foremost, I would say, to our children, to those who are near to us, we need to pass on the baton to the next generation. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. I'm still in that first wonderful verse six. They belong to the Lord. Those ones, those little ones, um, the Lord says, suffer the little children to come unto me. Um, don't let one of these little ones sin. Don't cause them to sin. Give them my word. It says, they have obeyed your word. What a thrilling um, thing for a parent uh, to see their children obeying God's word. He's given, they belong to God. He's given them to us, a little bit like uh, Hannah and, and Samuel. Samuel belonged to God. He, he, um, uh, he was given uh, miraculously uh, to Hannah when she was uh, barren. She gave uh, Samuel back to the service of God, promised that she would, and she did. They have obeyed your word. And now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. Another wonderful verse, that everything, God has created everything all around us. The birds and the bees, the flora, the fauna, the mountains, the hills, the valleys, the, the rivers running by. He, he made them all, the rivers flowing by. How great thou art. They, they know that God has given everything. And by the way, they know that uh, 
uh, they ha that God, the Father, has given the Lord Jesus. Again, he's praying it for his disciples, but why not pray it for your own, for your own families? Uh, verse 8, for I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. You believe that in faith for our children. Of course, the Lord is talking about his disciples, the chosen a few that were close to him, and he gave them uh, his word, and they accepted them. Believe it for your own children, your own families. Uh, give them God's word. Teach them the truth of creation that's there, uh, God's invisible powers, his eternal power and divine nature, which is clearly seen uh, from what has been made um, in Romans 1. In Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God. Um, these wonderful visual aids that we have to God's glory, to his creative power, to his um, uh, uh, creative genius, the order that he has created, um, the wonder of, of the laws of, of gravity, um, the foundations of, of the universe, uh, uh, of mathematics that God has instituted. Teach them to your children and pray that they would accept them. And by the way, them accepting them is not uh, you must accept this. That's something that comes from within. So pray that um, a faith would rise up from within their hearts, a love for God's word, a love for his truth, um, a, a love for the knowledge of God in the face of Jesus Christ. They knew with certainty that I came from you and they believed that you sent me. So not only are they believing in, in the account of creation, that God has created everything and given everything. Um, we, our prayer is that they would know with certainty faith is the substance of things hoped for, the certainty of things not seen. There's, there's a certainty, there's a substance, there's an assurance that faith brings, which isn't a vague, it isn't a kind of vain hope um, that, you know, a wistful thought uh, that something might happen for the good. It's, it's a firm foundational assurance in the promises of God's word that what God has said will come to pass. God is not a man that he should lie, nor neither the son of man that he should Repent, hath he said, and shall he not do it? Wonderful uh, scripture and assurance of God's word. They knew with certainty that I came from you. So not only are they believing um, uh, the Lord's disciples and our children and our children's children by faith, I might get to that verse, those who will come, uh, that God has created, but they believe in the story of the gospel, that the Lord Jesus was sent from God, that he came to become obedient unto death, even death on the cross, that he would, that he, he would triumph over sin and death. The head that once was crowned with thorns is crowned with glory now. The royal diadem adorns the mighty victor's brow. This is what... It, what is encompassed in this wonderful few lines, they knew with certainty that I came from you, that the Lord Jesus is the Son of God, the promised Messiah, the Deliverer, uh, the Saviour of the world. They knew this with certainty. This is what we want for our loved ones, for our friends, that not only would they have some um, superficial, you know, cerebral knowledge of, of, the, of uh, the literature uh, and the phraseology of the Bible, um, as they would know Shakespeare or the great poets of, of the English language, but that they would know with certainty the truth of the gospel in their hearts, that they will have sought the Lord with all their hearts and found him that they will have opened the door when he knocks so that the Lord could come into their life. They would 
you, you know something with certainty when it's part of your life, when you've experienced um, the forgiveness, when you've experienced the joy of your salvation, uh, that certainty. And then uh, still in verse eight, and they believed that you sent me. The, the, the Lord is focusing his prayer, as it were, his investment of prayer on his disciples. We should focus, we should invest, we should travel in prayer for our loved ones, that they may know with certainty that God sent the Lord Jesus, his only son, to be the saviour of the world, to um, die on the cross, um, uh, for his head to be crowned with thorns, that he would take all the suffering and the penalty for our sins. We should pray that our children, our loved ones, would come to this deep knowledge of the Lord Jesus. And then verse 9, I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world. It's repeating what I've said earlier. Um, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. So again, it's a wonderful reassurance. Um, if in faith we believe we're, uh, that we are encompassed by that prayer. And the Lord is praying for us. Uh, and he is saying, God has given us for him. That's, that's another way um, around to a, a modern way of thinking. Oh, it's for us. We, we're chosen for our prestige that we could be, um, uh, that we, I mean, it's a wonderful hymn again. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. And of course we are. And we, as I've said, we, we are joint heirs with Christ. As it says, if indeed we share in his glory, if indeed we share in his sufferings. So we're joining to something that isn't um, uh, superficial. It's not a, a kind of cheap sonship. It's a sonship with responsibility that bears a burden of responsibility, that, uh, that bears the burden of the great inheritance of faith that has been handed down to us, that if, if need be, um, bears the burden of suffering, that we take up our cross when we follow the Lord Jesus, we deny ourselves, we, um, as, as the grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it, it can only then um, uh, bear fruit, can only then grow, uh, can only, only then uh, honour and glorify the one who planted the seed. Um, the one who gave the seed. I'm praying for them. Um, I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. And then this wonderful verse 10, all I have is yours and all you have is mine. Can we ever get to that position? <laughs> I mean, I'm not um, uh, pretending, I'm not saying that I've already attained it, but I'm pressing on for the prize of the upward calling. I'm pressing on uh, to be in that position where all I have is his, where I acknowledge, I mean, it is anyway, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, but where I acknowledge in my life that everything I have is his. And even more mind-blowing, all you have is mine. Now, of course, the Lord had the perfect relationship with his Father in the communion of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in the Father. We believe in the Son. We believe in the Holy Spirit that proceeds from the Father and the Son. And with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. Uh, but um, what a wonderful offering to us that all um, he has is ours as we're adopted into his family, as we receive the spiritual inheritance of Christ, as we are all one in Christ, as we are partakers in the divine nature, as we're sharing and fellowshipping in the Holy Spirit. Um, it, it is mind-blowing that the, the God who created everything is offering it uh, to us through the Lord Jesus. An, an amazing, profound, powerful um, 
uh, truth in this wonderful prayer of John 17. Uh, I've only got halfway through uh, verse 10. Um, the second half is even more mind-blowing. And glory has come to me through them. This is um, uh, revealing a depth of truth that uh, whatever we do for the Lord, however great our faith is for him, however great our exploits are for him, um, however great our prayers are to him, how, however great a following um, uh, there, uh, we gain for the kingdom uh, as co-workers, as co-heirs and co-workers for the, for the kingdom, the glory is for the Lord. Uh, we are treasures in his crown. Uh, uh, the Lord says, and glory has come to me through them. It's, again, a, a, a great burden of responsibility for us as Christian believers, to be um, not only reflecting God's goodness and grace and glory in our lives, but to actually uh, represent, to be his uh, glory. And for whatever we achieve in life, to be for him and not for us. Now, we, we talk about, uh, there, there are, I think, five crowns talked about in, in the New Testament, in one sense, that we... Um, receive a crown, but as in that wonderful hymn, Love Divine, all love's excelling, um, uh, where it says, casting all our crowns before him. Uh, it, it, in that verse, it starts, crown, um, change from glory into glory, till in heaven we take our place. I mean, that alone is a wonderful thought, to be changed from glory into glory. But whose glory is it? Is it the glory of man? Is it the glory of the Caesars or the Pharaohs or the Herods or, or, the, or the other potentates of time? No, it's changed from glory, one degree of glory into another till in heaven we take our place. The glory is for him. Heaven is, is primarily God dwelling with us in his presence for his glory because that's the only glory that has any enduring value. The, the glory of man is a flash in the pan. That's a rhyme I've just come up with. It's a flash in the pan. It's here today. It's gone tomorrow. Uh, it's the making of your name only for um, a, a tower to be built that crumbles because it has no foundations. Uh, no, the, the biblical truth is that all the glory goes to him, not unto us, O Lord, um, David writes, but unto thy name be glory. No glory should go to us because there is no fulfillment in the glorying of man. Uh, uh, such a man's praise is not from men, uh, but from God. Uh, the glory that we want is, is the enduring, eternal weight of glory, a love divine. Finish then thy new creation till uh, true and spotless let us be. Let us see thy great salvation perfectly restored in thee. Changed from glory into glory, till in heaven we take our place, till we cast our crowns before thee, lost in wonder, love and praise. Now, this is um, the royal diadem that adorns the mighty victor's crown. What is within that royal diadem? This, this crownly band that's around the head uh, that once um, held those, the crown of thorns and suffering for us. Um, the jewels in that diadem are us. We've spoken about it before. I pray that the eyes of your hearts may be enlightened, that you may know the riches of the glory of his inheritance in you. Second half of verse 10. And glory has come to me through them. So you haven't just got a responsibility to yourself, to your family, to your work, to your pension, to your mortgage, to, to all the cares of this world, um, to do everything as unto him, um, that, that you might be walk worthy of your calling um, uh, here on earth, but you are 
um, creating and even through suffering an eternal weight of glory this this is the crown that's too heavy for us to wear but it's made up of of the lives um, and the virtues and the the spiritual exploits for the kingdom that we have uh, wrought here on earth and the character that has been built within through pressure and through heat, precious stones of uh, fine um, pure metals which go into the crown of glory for the Lord Jesus. All I have is yours and all you have is mine, the Lord says, and glory has come to me through them, through us. I will remain in the world no longer, the Lord Jesus says in his prayer, but they are still in the world. That's us. That's his disciples. That's all the generations of, of Christian saints through the ages. Uh, they are still in the world and I am coming to you. The Lord Jesus is the mighty victor. He has conquered sin and death. He's vanquished Satan. He, he, you know, oh grave, where is thy sting? Oh death, where is thy victory? Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. It wasn't even his own sin. He died for the sins of the world, the life he lives. He lives to God. And he says, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name. So the Lord is now praying for those who are left behind. He has ascended to glory. And men of Galilee, why do you stare into heaven? Um, this same Jesus will return there to the Mount of Olives, promised there in Acts 2. And you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jer Jerusalem, Judea, and to the ends of the world. The Lord is praying for us to fulfill that mission. His prayer in John 17 is an eternal prayer. It's an enduring prayer. It's an effective and persistent prayer. It's not just, oh, I've just got to say a prayer, you know, my morning quiet time. I've got to say a prayer before I get off to work. No, the Lord was deep in prayer, in communion with his Father. He's the one man, Christ Jesus. He's the one mediator between God and man. He's interceding for us. He ever intercedes for us. That prayer is enduring. Protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. I was talking earlier about our oneness in Christ, our unity in the Lord Jesus, our fellowship in him. He's the head of the one body. There's not a whole load of bodies, um, as it were, you know, marching around. Um, most of them would be headless if they were. There's one head. We hold fast to the head and we are all members of the same body and we relate one to another. We feel the pain one, uh, one uh, 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 to another. Um, uh, if one uh, part of the body is hurting, we all feel it because we're part of that same body. But we relate to the other members through the head, through the Lord Jesus, who is the head of the body, the fullness of, of him who fills everything in every way. Um, while I was with them, the Lord said, physically in person, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction. I, I tragically, um, uh, with, with uh, uh, Judas, I'm interpreting from that verse. Uh, then I, I want to, to go a little bit further down as he, he says, look, I, verse 14, I have given them your word and the world has hated them. I mean, it's counterintuitive why the world would hate God's word, except if you factor in the enemy of God who distorts, who confuses, who usurps, uh, who deceives, uh, who destroys. Um, and it says, look, I have given them your word and the world has hated them for they are not of the world. You are not of the world any more than I am of the world. I mean, of course, we're not of the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. And then uh, verse uh, 15, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. So look, we're in it now. 
whether we like it or not. We're in it up to our necks, as Gregory Peck said to David Niven in The Guns of Navarone, you're in it right up to your neck. Um, but actually, isn't it wonderful um, uh, to uh, uh, be transformed by the renewing of our mind? So, you know, people say you need a checkup from the neck up, and we do. We need to make sure that we are focused on what is our mission, what is our purpose um, uh, here. It is to bring glory to the Lord Jesus, to serve him, to see that his word is instilled in our children, to see that glory will come from our children, to see that we hand faithfully the baton over of the generations of those who have served him faithfully through the years, even those who have given up their lives um, so that they may have this Stephanus crown, the crown of martyrdom, so that we may cast our golden crowns before him, lost in wonder, love and praise. Let's give all honour, all glory, all thanks to the Lord Jesus. As he intercedes for us, may we intercede one for another. God bless you and enjoy reading the Lord's Prayer.